I want us to start with talking about some of the funding challenges we have in our education sector back home in Nigeria. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, you know, like you've already said, it's nothing in life is free. Education is one of those uh, uh, sectors that we cannot begin to uh, fathom as a as a people that we think that is uh, is is a public service that oh just like a family you think your your parents are uh, giving you food are giving you clothing are giving you all these things just because they are each, your your their child the reality is that as Nigerians we have to start realizing that as an independent citizen we have to invest in ourselves for a better future. So at the end of the day, education is one of those sectors that at the end of the day, we have to start realizing institutions, individuals, communities have to invest in how best we look at the future, not just by looking at the government, but how can we start looking at ourselves to invest better in that sector? Because the, the government can't do it alone. It's not possible. It's not possible at all. The right, as it to 2023, we had about 1.94 million registrants for JAMP alone. Nigeria has over 200 universities, uh, 120 polytechnics, give or take 60 colleges of education, and they're already working at full capacity. You cannot begin to imagine how those institutions are being run. Now, if you look at the numbers, at that 2023, let's not even think about the number of those, those who have taken JAMP this year, and they're all going to, where are they going to go? The demand is overwhelming. So when you think of the structures and the demand and the quantity, we're not, we're not even going to go into quality of content of our institutions right now. We just want to talk about uh, the, the structures that we have on ground. So of course, funding is a big issue and the government is, is doing the best they can, but we cannot meet up. So we have to start thinking about you know, international agencies, um, private sector collaborations, and even uh, inter interventions. How can we start doing uh, alumni funding to see how best we can come together to see how our young people from basic education levels to tertiary to create a way that when these students are coming out, they're not just looking at government jobs and private sector jobs, but entrepreneurship skills so that they are not just dependent on the system to make a living. Otherwise, it's going to be a very bad a ripple effect on the system as we go forward. How has funding been like for you? Because that project in itself is supposed to change the face, right, of our education you know, system, the kind of education that we give to young people that come into the system. And how realistic and intentional are we when we talk about upgrading our curriculum. So the, uh, thank you for that question. That's a um, um, uh, beautiful question. Thank you. So the reality on ground is that, you know, when you're working with different organizations, institutions, and mindsets, it's very challenging when you're talking mm -hmm. about entrepreneurship skills, uh, funding, and trying to create a new curriculum around uh, a future. Because, you know, it's one thing um, working with a system from different parts of the world who are looking to the future. But in Nigeria, you know, it, uh, I don't want to use Nigeria as a case study because we, mm. in Nigeria, all our professors, our chief executives are brilliant. They are brilliant uh, men who are working in a system that are, are managing an environment. So let's, I don't want to try to belittle or make it look as if they're not doing their best. They're, doing, they're going above and beyond with what they have. But the reality is that we cannot go from yesterday to manage today. We have to give our children the best they can they have for today against tomorrow. If we're looking to bring investors from around the world to come into Nigeria, to invest in Nigeria, to give our young people the best version for this country for tomorrow, then we have to give Nigerian university system, politics and colleges, the best engineers, the best doctors, and the best computer scientists and technicians to graduate if we, these investors are going to come in here and have them. And the best way to do that is to collaborate, to have to say that, okay, University of Lagos, University of Lokoja, Amadou Bello University, uh, University of Benin can collaborate with Cambridge University, uh, Singapore University, Univers Texas A&M, University of Houston around the world. And all these minds are connecting with Nigerian schools and students are in in uh, Auchi Polytechnic can connect with, with the students in a uh, Newark University. And right here, artificial intelligence, a student right here is getting all information and quality and content right here and is graduating and doesn't have to wait to get a job in a, a Ministry of Communication or in a, a federal government agency here. He can create 
of a mobile device, a multimedia application right in his own home and market it to the world right here on his laptop. That is the amazing thing about technology. And that's what we're able to do. We're able to connect institutions here with schools around the world. That's what my project is all about, the Electronic Education Initiatives. And that's E-D-O-N, Electronic Digital Online Network. We connect schools in Nigeria with their peers around the world, get students here into classrooms in the world and bring classrooms in the world into our local classrooms in Nigeria. It is important that our young people, our young girls and young boys don't think that their only option is to work in a federal government agency or in a bank or to be a fashion designer, an actor or go into sports. They can get out and get into technology, go into the farmland, integrated pest management, agro-technology and the world is their oyster. All you have to do is get innovative funding, like you rightly said. There's um, right now, even internationally, outside of the USAID, MacArthur Foundation, opportunities through grant programs, even locally, there's Dangote Foundation, Abdul Samad Rabiu, ASR Foundation through the, the Boa Group. It's a wonderful fund. I work with them personally. They give grants across the tertiary system. They've given billions of Naira to different universities. I work with them to see how we can bring e-education and structures and uh, programs to different schools around Nigeria. So these are things that are, are happening across the country that people don't even know that are happening. So there's a lot of foundations and money that have been happening. Even tertiary, the tertiary education trust fund, I think, gives billions in funding to our tertiary education trust, um, tertiary uh, institutions. But so my point is that it, it's not exactly how or where the money comes, but how do you use it? And the kids have to start being innovative in what they do. Because right now, everybody has a mobile device. But if you spend too much time on social media, instead of maximizing your time in quality in your content of your time, so that tomorrow you come out with a skill set that makes you marketable, that way, that way in your 30s and 40s and 50s, no matter what happens, you are secure in your, in your retirement. And you are a product that can make your country better your community better, your family better. Before we let you go, I know I've taken a lot of your time, but before we let you go, very quickly, you're very out there working with different organizations. Now, I have had conversations with lecturers, uh, you know, uh, vice chancellors, and there is always one complaint. Government can fund, government doesn't fund. But I said, okay, how can you get creative, raising money to run? I, I, I know the resources may not always be there. You are also creative, but uh, what are the new trends, you know, that schools can also look at, you know, in raising funds to run, looking away from government? Because the truth is government is contending with so much, they really can't you know, do everything. And that's why you find organizations, individuals coming in to bridge that gap. But taking it further, how creative, what are innovative trends, what are trends right now that schools can actually get into to raise funds to run effectively? Okay, um, so there are many opportunities for schools to uh, think of uh, exciting ways to create funding for themselves outside of you know, government um, funding, which of course, since most of our universities here are federally or state funded, for example, um, tap into your alumni. You know, if you, if you have set up your alumni association desk, start working and knowing who your alumni are, wherever they are in the country, wherever they are around the world. You'd be surprised that every institution has doctors, professors, chief executives, former governors, uh, corporation heads. Some schools might even have uh, as much as Microsoft chief executives. And these are people who not only will give you money, but give you computers, give you infrastructure. So tap into that and start learning how to use your, your, your alumni associations to bring back you know, support into your school. And this will, this, this will give a huge support to your school. This is what most schools around the world do. If you have a huge alumni pool, and most schools who are like over 10, 15, 20, 30 years old, tap into your alumni, and that's another opportunity right there in which you can get infrastructure and funding to your school. That's just one idea of which you can. And of course, I'm available to any institution that wants to work with me to consult with them. Of course, I'll send your, your uh, new station my contact information. So I'm more than happy to work with schools to consult with them to help them with funding. Thank you very much for your time and I do hope that we can do this again in the very uh, not so distant future.
Thank you so much for having me. Right, Prof. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much for your time.